Hey everyone, welcome back to the environment. My name is Dave, and we are finally here at the top of the mountain of the Dexterity Mountain. We've been going over my favorite 100 top Dexterity games, and right now we are on to the last 10. These ones are family heirlooms to me, priceless. If you ask me to play these games, I'm going to say yes before you even think about asking me. I'll ask you. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into number 10, and this one is a cool, cool time. Let's do it. And it is Ice Cool and Ice Cool 2. Basically, it's the same game, but you can mash them up, and I like them mashed up the most. The racing aspect of the game is my favorite way to play, but I also like getting um, the fish and having the hall monitor chase us too, which is fun. But like I said, um, it, the game was so much fun. When there was one, it has these penguins that are wibbly wobbly, and, you, and they're like weeble wobbles. And you flick them through this school, and they're just trying to get fish or race throughout. When they had one out, awesome. When they had two out, phenomenal. And again, you can mash them up and you can make your just huge, huge dexterity board. It's kind of hard to find too, but this is an inexpensive game if you can find it at the right price, which means this is a huge dexterity game at a fraction of the cost of some of these big old um, dexterity games. So if you like flicking and you like these kind of weird kind of hook shots and even jumping over stuff, if you're able to flick it that way, well, Ice Cool is going to be for you. I love this game and I can't recommend it enough. Um, the colors, if I had to twist my arm, I would say my favorite one would be two, but just by a hair. Okay, so that is number 10. Oh, we're out of the double digits. Let's go to number nine. So number nine, this is my version of Pol Villa Paletti. There are many out there, but this one is mine. And it has, I like the art on this one, but if you know anything about this channel, I have championed this game quite a bit. I love just the simplistic nature of building up these cylinder um, held up structures with floors going up smaller and smaller. It's just a fun game. They're like bigger, um, chunky, blocks that you can get out to get more points it's a competitive game you could make it a cooperative game but the crash in this one is just oh it's it's a big one and it matters quite quite a bit but it only knocks off points so you don't out, uh, right out lose if you knock over the structure you just get negative five points that's one of the cool things i like about this game but this is such a fun one there are different versions out um it did win the spiel of jars uh, and um i think yeah yeah, it did. And I think it deserves it. If you can find a copy, absolutely pick this up. This one is staying with me though. So let me go on to number eight. The next one, I'm not gonna go grab my copy, but the box is already terrible. Anyway, this would be Rampage or Meeple in uh, Terror City. And uh, this was the first dexterity game that got me back into uh, like, well, they made me aware of the modern gaming world. I this is the first review I ever watched by Tom Vassell, and it was so inspirational. This guy with this like crazy colorful shirt, acting silly, showing us board games that I've never seen. It blew my mind, so I had to get Rampage. At the moment, at the time I got it was Rampage, and I prefer it that way, but it's since turned into Meat Point Terror City because of licensing purposes. But this is a fantastic kaiju game where you're flicking your disc, uh, dropping your monster, blowing over buildings. <laughs> and using special powers. It's such a fantastic package. It's hard to find. I, w I wish it would be um, reprinted and I wish there would be an expansion to it because you could definitely do so much with this game. So you've seen pictures you, and if you want to check out the review, I have a review for all of these games on the list today. So um, let's go ahead and just move over to number seven. Let's do it. So number seven is Tokyo Highway and this one is a surprise hit for me here and it's relatively new to me too i've only had it for about two months but i've been playing this over and over again now it's kind of like men at work that we mentioned earlier in the list but it's it's a little more elegant and i think it builds up better uh, when you build out this game you're, it's based on the tokyo highway how it's all crazy and loopy and doopy when you build this up it 
does look like a piece of art. This is a head turner for sure. People are gonna wanna see, uh, see what you're playing. They're gonna wanna play it yourself. Essentially, you're just building these popsicle stick roads over and under the roads that you're building and putting your cards on it. Cars, the cars. So it's really that simple. The cover is mysterious. I, I like that they went this way um, and they put the game on the back. Most of the time people, well, companies will just put like this bland cover but i don't think this is a bland i think this is awesome and start but then they won't put anything on the back associated with the game but they do here and it's just so cool i love tokyo highway this is by it games they have a lot of cool stuff i've only played this one i hope to get more games from them but for right now tokyo highway sits here at number seven let's go on to number six all right so number six i'm not going to go grab it it's out in my living room but this is beast of balance and man this is a unique and awesome idea it takes an app where you're like corresponding with the actual building of these animals now it's pretty expensive if you can't find uh, the right copy the battle one is um, the one that i'm going to say that i like but the, the original was just just as fun but it takes the app and you're putting these animals into the app and trying to make different hybrids and keep them from going extinct and it has its own little mini game within uh, the um, app and you can collect all of the animals so it's kind of like got to catch them all but beyond that you have this beautiful abstract kind of slanted very cool feeling animals and pieces of art that correspond to this um, like podium that they're on it it was love from first sight when I had seen this and I had to get it the battle version is cool but I like the cooperative version overall and that's when I normally play when I go to it and I'm trying to um, collect all the hybrid monsters and complete my decks on it right now but it is so fun so if you like stacking games and you want a unique idea that comes with a free app well you can get beast of balance but let's move on to number five let's go Number five, I briefly mentioned when I was talking about roasters, but roasters loses out to pitch car. Yes, this is definitely a family heirloom and will be passed down. And I wish I had more expansions, but just the base set is, you know, the bee's knees. Now, this also I'm putting in this position pitch car mini, but it's a tabletop one, it's a bit smaller. If you're gonna go, go all out. Now you can get two core sets and have, I think it's, 16 players because the stickers are different I like it there's a review so you can learn more about what I'm talking about but this course you can build any way you want you can do jump when you get expansions it is just a fantastic game hard to find because it's heavy and you have to import it from different places so again it's it's pricey but it's worth every penny and if you're going to splurge on a dexterity game I say do it on this one so um, that is Number five, five is my favorite number, um, but let's move on to number four. Let's go. Now, number four is Croconol. Now, I didn't splurge on Croconol. I wish I did because of the, um, well, I wish I could more of, because this is just like a, a medium set, uh, but Croconol is every dexterity, dexterity game lover's like magnum opus. This is the highbrow of dexterity. There are tournaments thrown all the time and it's so simplistic. It's a Canadian, I think, origin, um, but you're just flicking this into the middle here and trying to get them in the middle if there are no, none of your opponent's disc on here. They, now I have this powder on it. That's why it's a white, but it's just, they slide so nice. And if you get a better set, it can be a circle all the way around. You can just throw those discs and just so satisfying. But this is, one of those dexterity games that people who don't like dexterity games gravitate towards and people who do like them well like them being dexterity games they love this one and the same goes for me it's just hard to store and it, this one was actually pricey this is about um 150 so a really good set uh, set you back about 300 bucks but that's cool and all and that's number four let's go to number three Now, this was one of my grail games, and my friend had it, and I would play when he would come over, but I lost touch with him, of course, during this whole pandemic and such, but Riff Raff is 
one of my favorite games and again one of my grail games even beyond dexterity games um, this is up there on my all-time favorites so it sits here at number three and it's a boat that just wibbles wobbles and it's a very easy concept to grasp you play a card down the highest card you at first and it shows you what, the, what number you're going to be setting it on on the boat and you can really try to go kooky and set your opponents up by putting like a barrel or weird pieces where you know they're gonna fall or you can just play legit and try to stack as many pieces up as much as you can but you can't go wrong if you're going to play this game hard to get hard to find but if you're able to, to get this you're going to be smiling it's such a fun game and it has a lot of those oh type moments I'm always like at attention standing and like intense when I'm playing this game because I love it and it makes me engage quite a bit but that is Riff Raff by Azak Games a fun one and uh, let's go on over to number two all right so number two is my favorite catapult game and boy I had to import this the core set this is coconut doers but there's a four set uh, that was um, a Korean game I had to import it from Korea I was so anxious to get it be and then it was remade over here in the states and now we have it readily available anywhere but i paid extra dollars to get the coconut game and you know what i don't regret it because i got more experience it's playing this game everyone loves this one i have never seen it go wrong it's it's like that bozo the clown kind of throw things into balls into the cup but you're doing it with these awesome monkeys it has, it has a lot of dbz kind of references which is weird we do have a review for all this uh, there's expansions this being one of them also pink um, coconuts that you can get from the company mayday or um, underdog more of underdog games now has this uh under their wing which they are a fantastic company but i love coconut and if you like uh, dexterity games this is going to be had a hit if you like catapult games this is going to be a hit and if you just want to get people who don't like board games into one this is the number one uno number numero uno game that i go to when i hear people don't know board games because they start laughing it's an easy concept they want to keep shooting these coconuts and it's just it's really fun and i love how they bounce off and on so that is number two uh, we are here Whew, talked a lot there we are here to number one what do you think it is well let me tell you and it is catacombs third edition and yes people if you've been watching dexterity week and you watch the review you knew this is going to be up there now you know it's number one it has everything that a game i like needs to have this it's like somebody sees what my interests are and made a game for me it's it has evolved over time the first edition was so so in the art department from what i hear and it only consists of a little bit but as it's grown it's got more expansions and this big boy is packed full and a dungeon crawl where you add dexterity and this one adds so many different elements and it's so intuitive in the gameplay where you don't think it would be like how could you do a dungeon crawl with dexterity in so many ways like other than having some powers if you knock people around well they do such an interesting concept on and twist on all of the um pieces here the gelatinous cube has a different kind of aspect to it um the cubes are flipping over becoming fire traps um the there are just so many different boss unique powers and i think that this is a one versus all game the person who is the boss can play their hardest and everybody will still have a chance the good team and the bad team will have a chance at winning and everyone can have fun it gets intense it has a campaign kind of mode it's just so much fun i, I can't champion this enough i can't tell it enough and this was a review copy so i'm just so grateful to Elsewhere the Games for providing this, and I want more catacombs because there are tons more out there, and I'm absolutely going to get them when I do get a chance. But uh, whenever I get a chance to play catacombs, whoever wants to play it with me, let me know. I'll play with you because this is my favorite dexterity game of all time, hands down, or hands flicking up. Okay, so that was a hundred dexterity games. 
Whew, what a journey. And thank you for joining me on the journey. And uh, let, leave down in the comments some of your favorite dexterity games. I would love to know what you think, Fine Nation. But until next time, let us see ya. I am Dave. Have a great rest of your day and a great time with all you play. I'm out, everyone. You heard it here on the Game Vine. Bye. Vine Nation, we love making content here for you on the channel, and we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, so subscribe now and help us out. This video right here, I think you'll like. This video right here, YouTube thinks you'll like. Or you can just sit here and watch me dance as a dinosaur for a little bit longer. You can visit us at our social media outlets, and we're going to be improving our Patreon here soon. That's all for today. Miko, it's time to go. Good girl, Miko.